Vertex painting in UE5 is powerful, but with Nanite it gets a bit weird. Here's how to make it work. Go into Mesh Paint mode and select your mesh. Now choose the Paintbrush tool. You'll see painting options appear. Pick a channel and paint directly onto the mesh. Left click to paint the selected colour and shift left click to erase. In the visualisation drop down, you can enable colour view mode to preview what you are painting. But if you turn it off, you'll notice nothing's happening. That's because your material isn't using the vertex colours yet. To make your materials use the vertex colour, open your material and add a vertex colour node. For convenience, I connect this to a named rewrite node, which is kind of like a variable for materials. Add a component mask to isolate the channel you want. In this example, I'm using red and plug that into the alpha of a lerp node. This allows the material to blend between two options based on the vertex colour. Repeat this setup for the other channels and plug the result into base colour. Now when you apply the material, your vertex painting works and you can blend between two options based on the painted colour. Also ensure that your mesh has enough vertices as this is what you're painting onto. If you have too few, you won't see much happening. Vertex painting doesn't work the same on nanite meshes as the vertices change dynamically, meaning the paint would jitter all over the place. That's why the vertex color paintbrush is disabled on nanite meshes. Switch to the texture color tab. If the plus button is grayed out, go to project settings and enable virtual texture support. You can also see other mesh painting options here, but the defaults are good. Restart the editor for the changes to take effect. After that, you can add a mesh paint texture to your nanite mesh. This works the same way as vertex painting. Just pick the channel you want to start painting. However, there are some slight differences since this uses a texture, which means it is UV based and limited by resolution. And yes, UV seams can cause visible breaks in the paint. Once the texture is added, you will notice once again nothing is happening. This is because you will need to tell the material what texture to use. In the material, add a mesh paint object node and plug it into a texture sample. That gets wired into your material, just like the vertex color. Back in the viewport, you can now see that the painting now works. To paint the UV seams, you can enable seam painting, but it doesn't always work the best. To update the resolution of the mesh paint texture, go to the mesh details panel and scroll down to mesh painting. Here you can override the resolution and what UV channel is used. If you change the resolution, you will have to click the fix button to update the virtual texture's resolution. Also, if you override the UV channel that the mesh paint texture uses, you will have to update this manually in the texture sample in your material, as the mesh paint texture coordinate index node doesn't seem to work. Here's a brick material with a moss blend on top that works with both nanite meshes and non-nanite meshes. The nanite mesh uses nanite tessellation and height maps for detail, and then you can blend the moss on top. I used material attributes and blend material attributes node to blend the brick base and the moss together. The red channel from the mesh paint drives the alpha blend between the two materials. To support both mesh types in the one material, I use a nanite pass switch so it chooses the right method automatically. This means that you can apply the same material to both nanite and non-nanite meshes without having to worry about it appearing differently. If you have enjoyed this video on mesh paint tools, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.